I'll give a little introduction here to the art of uh, conscious dreaming. Um, we all dream, also animals dream. Uh, conscious dreaming actually has a few elements to it. Uh, one of them is being able to guide your dream, and the second is being able to remember your dream. And um, two elements are um, basically a skill which can be developed. Some people have this very easily and they can very easily uh, control their dreams. They don't lose consciousness as much and other people have it very hard. So it's a talent which can be developed. First we have to realize what we're actually doing in the dream. And we're actually doing several things in the dream. So we're projecting, we're remembering, we're fantasizing, and we're actually dreaming. And these things need to be separated. And first of all, let's talk a bit about what happens during the dream. Um, what happens is basically our life force becomes a bit less active while we sleep. So this gives opportunity because our body becomes more quiet for the more gentle, more deeply seated impulses which are in our energy body or in our minds to come forward. So it's in a way very similar to meditation where you in a way invite knowledge to come to you. And the dream is exactly the same. We create the opportunity for our minds, for our hearts, for our bodies to speak to us in the dream. So most often we will dream about the people and the events which we have experienced that day or more or less recently. So most dreams tend to be about your work, your partner, your children, your dogs, your friends, uh, your family. And this is very normal uh, because all these memories, all these impressions need to be rehashed, reassessed, and the dream is in a way also a process of pruning, of deciding like okay these things need to be committed to memory and these things can just be forgotten about. Um, so ultimately it helps to yeah, you could say clean the memory, clear the cache, so that we're open and ready for new experiences which can then be processed more deeply in the dream and we basically get this sorting process. Second part, we could say a slightly deeper layer of the dream, is when we start listening to our intuition. Um, because our energy body has a certain path, has a certain nature, a certain tendency. And if things are happening which are yeah, not in harmony with it, uh, there will be a strain or a stress in the energy body. Like, okay, this person might be a bad influence for me, or a certain decision might lead me on the wrong path or on the wrong road. And while we're dreaming, often these energy centers can project themselves into images. So you might have a nightmare if something is a bad decision, or you may actually have a very pleasant, um, hopeful, happy, lustful dream if something is a very good decision. It's also important to note that usually the people you see, the names you hear, the forms you see, the colors you see in your dreams, they have a very symbolic meaning which is very um, specific. And um, there's been a lot of study of dream symbolism and uh, there is in a way, you could say, a general language to dreams, but there's also a cultural language to dreams. Um, so certain things have a different significance depending on your cultural background. And this is where it gets very complicated, because your spirit may have a very different cultural background than your current incarnation. So you may find that the symbolism in your dream might be very shamanic in nature, or very druidic in nature, uh, even though you might be a Christian in this life. These things happen. Because ultimately, your energy body is a result of your spirit. And depending on the experiences of your spirit, 
also the energy body will project itself into the astral world. So often the things you get back from the astral in your dream space are a result of your spirit. So in a way you're also exploring your own spirit while you're dreaming. All these different aspects of your spirit are in a way reflected back to you in your dream. So, dreams are often called illusions and fantasies, but they're also called like the truth or revelation. In a way, both are true because of this very nature of the astral plane. So, when we dream, we go into the lower astral, and the astral responds to us. It's a little bit like clay, where if you put your hand in, it leaves an imprint. And we are constantly imprinting ourselves upon the lower astral by all our thoughts, our fantasies, our hopes, our fears. And when we are in a dream state, we can actually perceive the lower astral. So we can see the energy which we are radiating because it is in a way radiating back to us. So dreaming is very much like looking in the mirror, seeing what is our spirit radiating. Is it radiating hope, strength or fear and doubt? Um, so in this way it is very much uh, the place of truth, a place where you can meet yourself. But in another sense it's also a place of illusion, of trickery, because what you see is not real. Because you are not subjective. You are very colored by your very thoughts, by your convictions, by your emotions. And the things you will see in your dreams will mirror back to you your own convictions, your own emotions, your own fears, your own hopes. So it is not a very objective account, the things you see in your dreams. And it's important to realize that, even though they can reveal a lot of things to you, it is a very subjective revelation you are receiving, not an objective revelation. To be effective in your dream, it is ideal if you can move from the lower astral slightly higher into the higher astral. As I said before, usual most dreams are just a repetition of all the stuff which you've stuffed in your head, in your hearts and in your energy bodies. Because you have had no time during the daytime to process them. So also if you're very busy, if your life energy is very low, if you're sick, um, your dreams tend to be of quite low quality because you're just swamped, overwhelmed by all these impulses and they take up not only all your life in the daytime but also they take up all your energy and time while you're sleeping. So to have a very productive dreams you need to also be in a very relaxed space in your everyday life where you just have time to think, time to process things where when you go to sleep at night you don't really need to rehash all the events and all the impressions you've had during the day. So a meditative lifestyle is very conducive to uh, yeah, being a, an effective dreamer. So the second thing, so the lowest stage as I said is the memory, the second stage is the fantasy. So controlling fantasies is already uh, starting to become a real spiritual exercise, not just a social exercise in how to manage your time, your agenda. Um, because fantasies, they arise from often conscious or unconscious needs, desires and fears. So I can have fantasies of being torn apart or eaten or hor having horrible things happen to me, being raped. Um, these can be, in a way, my fears manifesting themselves. But I can have more lustful fantasies of eating nice cake or uh, making love or running around in the forest with lots of flowers or climbing a mountain. Um, and these are in my desires which manifest themselves. Ideally, these fantasies would manifest themselves in reality. You would just simply have your cake and you would learn not to be afraid of being eaten by dragons or whatever it is. <laughs> um, but often people get very much stuck in these patterns of fear and desire. Uh, these patterns are often built up over many lifetimes. 
and they tend to guide us into a certain direction along a certain path. So they're in a way also useful or they have been useful in pushing us in a certain direction because you don't want to upset your mommy or your daddy or whoever so you learn through fear and desire to go into a certain behavior pattern. But these behavior patterns are also reflected back to you in your dreams. And ultimately, if you want to dream about something else, you have to get rid of them. You have to be able to control them. You have to be able to free yourself of your desire, free yourself of your fear, to really be able to use the freedom which the dream state gives to you. And this is a tricky thing. It requires a lot of work, often with your own childhood, uh, your karma from previous incarnations, even ancestral traumas, uh, which yeah, may have been lived through through your parents or your grandparents, can still affect your dreams. And you can be dreaming about horrible things which happened to your granddaddy, which you know nothing about. But this fear, energy, can just be passed on and on from generation to generation. And especially in the female line, this tends to be quite strong um, because the baby takes much more of the energy of the mother than of the father um, through the process of being carried by the mother. So often like powers in a positive sense but also blockages in a negative sense from the feminine line uh, can be brought along and really interfere with your quality of dreaming. So it's interesting to look at problems which have are not just within you but also within your mother, within your grandmother, um, to see if there might be a deeper root which can be removed by you to clean up your dream space from all your fear and desire. Ultimately one of the reasons why even the pleasant desire dreams need to be gotten rid of is that all this power, this life force of this desire, this lust of this desire, should, in a way, enter into the body and get the body to evolve, to grow, so that it is able to fulfill the desires, to do the things it dreams about. And if it does all these things it dreams about only in, yeah, in a way, in a game, in a virtual reality, in a dream, then the body itself does not develop. And it is true that it is better to have it at least in a dream or in a fantasy than not having it at all. So sometimes the dream, the wish-fulfilling dream, is the best solution possible because it is not possible to fulfill that wish in the physical world. So fantasizing can be useful, it can be productive, it can also really unlock possibilities for spiritual development. But fantasies can also become an addiction. Like you can get it there, but you can't get it anywhere. And why go through the trouble of getting it physically if you can get it easily in a game, in a dream, in a fantasy? And then ultimately you are stuck on a very low primitive level because all the energy which you need to evolve is taken away. So it's very similar to a person who is uh, uh, addicted to marijuana. Also, it's, yeah, it gives a kind of feeling of relaxation, of fulfillment, but the life force itself is depressed, the desires are depressed, and yeah, the development, uh, spiritual development is slowed down. So it is possible to work with fantasies in your dream, but uh, you should try to minimize it. But then we come to the really productive dream where we are actually experiencing something which can help us, or learning something. Um, these dreams, however, are not restful dreams. Um, because the experience is quite intense and also it, yeah, in a way, really changes the energy body. So it is very much similar to going to school, to studying there, to learning lessons there. And uh, having too many of these instructive dreams can also become a burden because you wake up, wake up very confused, very tired, very preoccupied with the processes you've been working with in your dream and then you also have to work with all the lessons you're receiving during your waking life. Um, so even these productive dreams need to be managed in a way 
not to become overwhelming. What we can learn from dreams is actually patterns which can then be integrated in our physical bodies or even practiced in our daily lives. So if I can dream about being, I don't know, a great um, martial artist, already I'm preparing my body through fantasizing about it, by dreaming about it, to open the energy channels, um, to get this, in a way, astral structure, which can help me to become that. So, in a way, living your dream is really a very important thing, because the dreams are, in a way, creating a foundation for you to manifest that as a reality. So in the dreams you're in a way um, preparing for your future. And in the same way as an artist, you can in a way turn your dream into a work of art, into a work of vision, which can prepare a future not just for yourself, but actually for humanity, for more people than just yourself. So sharing a dream is a very powerful tool because it is a real experience, a real energetic imprint which can work for you, but can also work for others. And this is also why dreams, some dreams should be shared and told, other dreams should not be shared and told. Because the very act of sharing it is imprinting it. And some imprints are meant for you, they are part of your path, and some dreams are meant to be shared by the people around you. So know which dreams are personal, which dreams are in a way for common use. I hope this gives a little bit of insight into the structure of different levels of dream. In another video I will talk about more practical things we can do to improve our dreams.